Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Aaron Gaines, a managing partner at Anatech. So Aaron, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure will. Clayton, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, Dr. Aaron Gaines, uh, I've been with uh, Anatech since 2017. I'm one of the uh, managing partners, uh, along with uh, Dr. James Usry and Brent Ratliff. And Anatech uh, focuses on product development uh, for the swine industry. And um, the other thing that uh, we're involved with is uh, with Analogics Outdoors. We do uh, product development on the on the deer side on the in the hunting industry. So a little unique, but uh, been in the industry for 20 plus years. Got a PhD in animal nutrition. Uh, worked for a feed company uh, in my past life, and also worked for a production company for a little over 10 years, serving as their vice president before coming over to Anatech. Gotcha. In this edition, brought to you by U.S. Soy, Dr. Aaron Gaines joins us to discuss the significant difference in soybean meal NE values determined in academic facilities with strict environmental controls and those derived in commercial settings. Listen in to hear more about what's driving those differences between environments and what the implications are for the industry. He'll also answer the most critical question, what soybean meal net energy values should be used in practice? So I briefly looked over the article you sent about how soybean meal net energy is higher in a commercial setting versus an academic setting, which admittedly is something I've never really considered. Um, And making that statement initially, obviously, is going to raise a lot of questions. So would you mind diving into this and helping explain how this can be the case? Yeah, so uh, there's kind of some emerging information. Uh, there's been some work that's been done done on this uh, probably about five years ago now, uh, indicating that the energy value of soybean meal uh, is higher in a commercial environment as compared to an academic or university environment. And so we've done a considerable amount of work in this area trying to understand uh, what's potentially uh, explaining that difference. Uh, between a commercial and an academic environment. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, here on this podcast. Gotcha. So when was the first observation that soybean meal net energy was greater in a commercial environment? Yeah, as I indicated, uh, this work really started uh, about five years ago. Uh, Dr. Dean Boyd and Kate Zier Rush were uh, doing uh, studies within the hand ore system, looking at the energy value of soybean meal. And what they found in that study was that uh, soybean meal Relative, relative to corn on a dry matter basis, the energy value was about 109% of corn, which is significantly higher than uh, published estimates or estimates uh, derived from academic settings. Uh, some of the more, for example, NRC 2012, the relative energy value of soybean meal to corn is about 76.6%. And then more recently, some work out of Hans Stein's lab at the University of Illinois on average, they're showing a higher estimate than NRC. They're showing around uh, 91%. And uh, given, you know, previous academic estimates and then also a previous internal trial uh, within the Hanor system in a low stress environment, uh, Dr. Boyd uh, kind of questioned this estimate, this more recent estimate. And then it wasn't until more commercially available data started to come to light that gave Dr. Uh, Boyd the confidence that this initial estimate was indeed correct. So you talked about that first study, but have there been any other um, experiments that have been conducted that um, indicate a higher energy estimate? Yeah, there, there actually has. Uh, you know, we've been involved uh, in a study with uh, Dr. Gary Stoner and his team of swine nutritionists uh, from the CP group in China. Uh, We conducted a couple studies with that group and their commercial research facilities. Uh, In their first study uh, we conducted, it was in uh, early finishing pigs from 104 to 148 pounds. And then we also did a follow-up study in mid to late finishing pigs. And those pigs were weighing 148 to 242 pounds. And in those studies, uh, in the early grower period or the early grow finish period, we found a soybean meal energy estimate of 110% relative to the corn, again, on a dry matter basis. And then in the mid to late finishing pigs, we found 98.3% of corn. So on average, about 100% of corn. And then uh, some work done by Kansas State and JBS Live. Uh, it's some published work, uh, Samin and 
2020 published this work. Uh, it was done in nursery pigs. They did two studies. Uh, and in that uh, research, they found that the energy estimate for soybean meal ranged from 105 to 125 percent of corn on a dry matter basis. And so, um, you know, if you look at the studies that have been completed from Han Orr uh, to the work by CP, the work done by Kansas State and JBS, you've got uh, five studies, uh, four different locations by three companies, all showing similar results with the energy estimate of soybean meal being comparable to corn and significantly higher than what's been derived in academic or university settings. And so we're not saying that the estimates that are derived in a university or academic setting are wrong. We're just saying that they're different uh, when these pigs are in a commercial environment where there's more stress, particularly immune stress. Gotcha. And you actually touched on it just a little bit there. But the question that people are obviously going to be asking the most is why exactly the energy estimate for soybean meal is higher in a commercial environment. Yeah, it's the right question to be asking. And there's ongoing work uh, in this area funded by U.S. Soybean Board to really help us understand the exact mechanism of action. And so we do know that soybean meal uh, is unique in the fact it's got bioactive functional compounds that do offer a wide range of health benefits. Uh, and so our current hypothesis is that some of the caloric efficiency advantages of soybean meal may be a result of net energy being conserved for growth by these functional compounds, plausibly through supporting and reducing maintenance energy needs. And so there's going to be more to come on that, but that's our current working hypothesis uh, on how soybean meal uh, is shown as a higher energy estimate in a commercial environment versus a university or academic environment. And, you know, I, I should have mentioned earlier some of that initial work done in the Han Orr system um, in a low stress environment. They found similar energy estimates as what's been found in university or academic settings. But when you get into large pen situations and more of a commercial type environment, uh, we're seeing this higher uh, energy estimate of soybean meal relative to corn. And it's been repeatable. Uh, other uh, integrators that have their own commercial research facilities have found similar findings. So based on this and based on some of the commercial experiments that, that have been conducted, what soybean meal energy value should we really be using in our commercial facilities? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I would encourage uh, the people listening uh, to this podcast, if they have the capability, is, you know, validate the energy estimate for yourself on your own pigs within your within your own system. And that's what we're seeing a lot of uh, companies do is do uh, validation studies uh, because this is uh, definitely different than what we're used to uh, from some of the previous uh, work that's been do done on soybean meal energy values. But, you know, as I look across the, the pork powerhouses, um, I went through this exercise the other day uh, asking various nutritionists where uh, they were setting the energy level for soybean meal. And uh, it's anywhere from, uh, in general, 90 to 95% of corn is fairly common, but we are seeing movement uh, up to 100% of corn uh, as well. So um, it definitely kind of showcases that people are starting to move the needle higher uh, in terms of adjusting that energy value of soybean meal compared to uh, maybe some of the previous published estimates. Gotcha. So if we adjust our formulation, what are some of the implications that we may see from a higher soybean meal in the energy content? Yeah, so in a low energy diet scenario, so a situation where you're not using supplemental fat, what happens when you put a higher energy value on soybean meal in formulation, it's actually going to increase your diet cost per ton, your invoice diet cost per ton, um, particularly uh, if a minimum energy lo level is used. And so this can be really misleading from an economic standpoint, uh, because if you look at it on a cost per pound of gain basis, the cost per pound of gain is actually improved when you when utilizing a higher soybean meal energy estimate. So you really got to be looking at a formulation system that allows for least cost per pound of gain parametrics that would account for this. So the diets are optimized and this would assume no improvement in gain, you know, with increasing energy level, which certainly varies by system. 
Um, but that would be a low energy scenario. Now, if you're using supplemental fat, um, you would displace some of that fat in the diet with a higher energy estimate on soybean meal, which would result in a lower invoice cost per ton. But in that low energy diet scenario, uh, it can be misleading because the energy level of the diet's going up. So your amino acids are also having to, to increase to maintain that lysine to energy ratio along with minimum amino acid ratio. So that diet cost does go up. But again, if you look at it on a cost per pound of gain basis, the diet is actually more economical uh, when you adjust that energy level of soybean meal up. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thank you again, Aaron, for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Clayton. Appreciate it. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. <laughs> <laughs>